Hi there. In uh, 1983, DEC canceled the PDP-10 computer. PDP-10 was a 36-bit time-sharing computer, uh, very revolutionary. Uh, I'm Jerry Morsdorf. I came to Columbus in 70 to come to Ohio State and worked on the KA-10, one of the first PDP-10 time-sharing computers. And here in Columbus, uh, is the home of CompuServe, we recently uh, saved from the dumpster nine PDP-10 clone computers made by Systems Concepts. The machines are every bit of PDP-10, but much smaller. In 83, when that canceled the PDP-10 to go to the VAX, uh, Systems Concepts shortly thereafter brought out a PDP-10 clone. A bunch of really smart guys. It's an amazing piece of engineering from the time and even today. CompuServe was their largest customer, or a large customer. The SC40, the machine here, these racks, uh, is about eight times as fast as the fastest PDP-10 deck ever made, the KL-10. The systems have 36 million words, 36-bit words of memory, which maps out to about 144 megabytes, which ain't much even today, certainly today. One we're on here has got five SCSI disk drives on it, which uh, provide about 30 gigabits of disk storage. And with today, with a two terabyte drive being 190 bucks, it's just, uh, it's a blast from the past. Uh, my intent was just to keep one of them running here for posterity. We've got nine of them. You can see them in these large OEM bays. There's one of them. This is a MagTape, a DAT MagTape drive that was used to back it up. We haven't had the guts to bring this up yet. But we were able to bring up one of the processors uh, with the five SCSI disk drives on it. Or maybe more, I'm not sure. It's two bays. SCSI so daisy chained in these CompuServe chassis. And we've got. Uh, we're bringing up processor KHG, this string DZA. Here's the uh, here's the machine. This is the backplane side. In the backplane, ribbon cables connect to a 10 center headers. Come through the backplane. The single backplane. On one side, we've got a control bus. Teletype ports, 0, 1, 2, 3. And you can see, built by SC Group, SC40. This is the one we're going to boot. It's got a SCSI disk uh, chain hooked up to it. The system has a, options for a bunch of SCSI uh, ports. It also has two FDDI ports, the proper implementation of FDDI. And uh, that was used for networking other processor to processor connectivity. So uh, we've got on port zero, a, uh, if you get one of these yourself, it's a straight cable. It took a while to figure that out. Plugged into a PC with a terminal emulator. We would have much preferred a teletype, but this will work. So we're going to turn it on. SC40 has a supervisor processor which boots up its own on its own separate SCSI disk drive. And it loads a bunch of stuff, then it loads a microcode, runs some diagnostics. And um, each of the channel controllers, the SCSI controllers, has microcode that gets loaded into it. This is really pretty, pretty amazing piece of engineering. implemented with a ton of programmable gate arrays, including, I guess, a mass program gate array on the processor. And this story is that they simulated it before they even cut a, cut a, uh, cut a mass program. Tell it the OS. What we're bringing up here is CompuServe's version of the top 10 operating system, CompuServe 
got their copy of Thomas Penn at some point started to diverge but this machine will run the standard Thomas Penn operating system and me why I reloaded it and said you had to ask since I said nothing There is humor. That's a good thing. And it's bringing up the OS. It's going to ask me a lot of stupid questions about how come there's no mag tapes. Yeah, reload. And uh, you can see the DZA string here. FDDA is offline. Why is there no networking? And uh, that is pretty complex to bring up. I'm going to check network links here, and uh, yes, reload anyway. I am operator. It wants a date and time, because you know there were no time of year clocks in, 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 in these ancient days. The officer was very concerned about the time and the date, and asked me 95 times, 12 ways, uh, how uh, if I've got the right date. So we are uh, 6, uh, February, and then it wants the time. All kinds of warnings about things missing. Remember, this was an operating system route where it ran hundreds of users constantly. It was the core of the CopyServe network. And there we go. And we're in OpServe, the Operator Services uh, console. Type help. And see all your standard PDB 10 stuff there. And zoom in and just get a little, or just walk in on that a little. But uh, that took a fair amount of work just getting that to come up. These machines uh, were in service uh, probably less than a year ago uh, as they moved the last uh, people off the network. I'll show you over here some of the other parts of CompuServe's network. These are uh, CompuServe's micronodes, which are based on uh, the QBus backplane. And uh, they actually accomplished. Uh, 32 port line cards all async of course and then you had then you had your modems and modems were big and bulky this is one port of a modem uh, look like general data comp kind of design to me here's some more composer SCSI drives some of them are empty and uh, of course, we got table. There are three pallets of table we took out with the system and uh, probably end up with the recycler. It's just every async port had a cable assembly. Then it went out of cable assembly from the network processor to the modem. And then companies have also had a thing called the Sentry. They were cabled in the, on the loop side, the telephone loop side. This used to be hard, and now it's much easier. Back around the machine here. This is the back side of the SC40 processor. Pretty cool. Uh, pluggable power supplies. He's providing up to 30 amps. Uh, we're drawing about 10 amps to 5 volts right now. And there's the SCSI drive that attaches to the control processor and the cards are situated uh, in this uh, card, card chassis, control processor, the CPU itself. These are uh, 16 megaword main memory boards, some sub-controllers, and then the SCSI controllers. And somewhere in here is the FDDI, I suppose. And this is what the back of a nightmare of SCSI cable looks like uh, for all the disk I.O. Remember that's less performance probably than a, a USB cable today. Those are SCSI cables. Over here I pulled the boards uh, from the SC40 
Over here you got your uh, power supply. Big monster beast. Lots of junk in there. Cool handles. Pull them out. Like that. Uh, this is the control processor board. I'm uncertain what processor's on there. I, I think it. Uh, at any rate, that's the control processor. This is uh, the uh, uh, SD40 processor implements the PDP-10. Under there is a monster gate array. All kind of other programmable logic. This is one of the 16 megawatt memory boards. 16 meg the way it's set up now. And here's one of the SCSI controllers. And it's all beautifully made. And that's about it. I just wanted to uh, show you what an SC40 looked like. Timeline on this was probably about, uh, these have date codes of 95 on them, so they're not incredibly old, but uh, they basically rescued all the PDP-10 users that, that canceled. Uh, if you were a processor that was far better than uh, faster or smaller or less power than, uh, than any of the other ones uh, that made. So thank you for listening. and. Uh, Come visit the, uh, uh, our collection also of AM radio transmitters, tube-based AM radio transmitters. That's a little weird, but, you know, if you like this weird, you might like the AM transmitter collection. Thank you very much.